All right, here's the video review for the Iron Factory Sword of the Chrysalis, or Sword of the Guardian. Chrysalis is the name of the character, AKA their version of IDW's Die Atlas. And uh, yeah, here he is in his jet mode. He does have tank treads, but he doesn't really have on the bottom here, but he, does, he doesn't have all three of the big powered modes or anything like that, or his base mode. I mean, there maybe there's a fan base mode, but the instructions only show his jet mode. And uh, it's not a bad jet mode, a little hodgepodge, hollow, but uh, just the case. So you see his sword stores right here. Um, he does one, his shield connector plugs in here as well as it comes with a stand adapter. So you can use him with any of the uh, Iron Factory stands that you may have gotten with any of your other figures, which is nice. To have him in a flying pose. I'm just going to go ahead and pop that off like that because we're going to need that connector here for the shield itself. Now, I have often been accused of only transforming something once before I uh, review it, and which is not the case at all. Uh, in this case, it is. Uh, and, and there's because there's a part on this that I'm a little worried about, and I'll, exp I'll explain the reason why when we get to it. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not a super difficult figure. You can kind of see where all of his pieces are. Anyway, feet, legs, arms, head, backpack. Yeah, so there's a the gem. We'll go ahead and take the sword off, uh, pull the shield, uh, untab the shoulders from the shield here, and this whole piece should just come off. That will go off to the side. And you can go ahead and take this, this piece right here, plugs into the bottom of the shield, and that's going to be what allows it to hold it in robot mode. The legs, unpeg from the wings here. You can go ahead and bring those down. Now, you, the instructions say to make sure that this hinge is facing this direction when you fold these up. I guess that makes lets them get a little straighter here in uh, uh, alt mode. This needs to untab here from the bottom. Although now I can't get my fingernail under it. It's coming out. Hold on, let me get my little screwdriver here. I don't know where my spudger went. It was right over here with all my stuff, and it's gone missing. I don't know if the dog got a hold of it, or if somebody else borrowed it or what, but I got a little flathead screwdriver I can use here. This is not the part I was talking about, however, just FYI. There's a little tab here. This tab needs to come undone. And we did it. And that will allow the backpack to hinge up here. And then this piece just folds up and stores in the backpack. There's a specific instruction that looks like you're not 100% sure what it's telling you to do. It's to flip that peg out as you fold these up. So once that's done, you can rotate the legs kind of down and around so that, again, the ball joint works properly. Uh, that's just how I tell you to position these. There's the legs. Fold the uh, tank treads in to fill in the back of his legs and then open up his feet. Fold the waist pieces down here. Bring this up, rotate this whole lower half around so his feet are facing the front way. Unpeg the arms and fold his shoulder guards up. This whole assembly comes up and uh, you wanna lift this up, lift this back so you can flip the head all the way through, fold that in and around. Like that, bring his head up. And his shoulders up, the wings come up on the backpack, just kind of angle up. Once this goes in, this, this tabs into the back of this plate right here to lock his head in place. And then the backpack assembly folds up and then the little key things on the end of his wings fold up and there mostly complete is robot mode and here's the reason that I didn't want to do this too many times before I viewed it one as you can see it's not a difficult transformation I felt like I had it down uh, for the most part the only difficult part was getting that tab undone uh, under here because it does fit in very tightly and there's not a whole lot of room to get your fingers in there however th his fists in here these panels flip out I'm gonna do it very carefully I don't seem to have 
many worries about opening these, but you can see there's very thin plastic uh, on these hinges and they're fairly tight. So you come in here and you may have to use the sword to flip the hands out. It's, it's not the hands that are the issue, it's these panels because uh, when you close them up, make sure when you close these things up, apply pressure down here at the joint because push, pushing it up here, like one of them, the first one almost like butter the first time I over on this arm when I went to push it up, started to bend very easily and it freaked me out. Um, and you can see it kind of doing it now. You wanna make sure to push, use that force there or that will break. It does not take much force to start bending those things. And uh, like I said, I wanted to make sure I got the review done in case one of those did end up snapping on me because it's a, this is the one that you can see, it does, you can see it's already bent a little bit. It doesn't quite sit flat up here. So uh, like I said, it's, it's less scary. For some reason, opening them up is less scary than, uh, than folding them up. But either way, like I said, try to support that joint because uh, when I went to push this up, it just went wink. I mean, like, it was, it was scary. Iron Factory has always put out quality stuff, and like I said, as long as you're as long as you're not abusing that leverage there, uh, and pushing up here versus down here, you should be fine. Um, once once I started, once I realized there was an issue, and started pushing from that joint, it it's not as scary anymore. Like it, it moves, it's, it takes a little bit of force, but it doesn't take the amount of force where you're seeing it bend and you're freaking out. Um, but I, like I said, I just I didn't want to risk doing that several times and having it crack on me. Uh, I've had that happen with toys before where it's been fine while I've been playing with it. I've played with it several times and then the minute I've gone to review it, something cracked because it was a, a weak link. Um, so just something to be aware of. I didn't see anything in the instructions that specifically said, hey, be aware of this and uh, just letting you know. Anyway, once he's in robot mode, he's got a ball joint head, ball joint shoulders, in and out, swivel at the shoulder, bicep swivel, dual hinged elbows, wrist swivel. Um, you should have wrist swivel because there's a feature here that I haven't shown off yet. Um, waist swivel, ball joint hips, thigh swivel, about 90 degree hinge knees, and then the ankles themselves are a ball joint, and then he's got the toe articulation as well. He can hold his sword. And as I said earlier, you can put it on either side, but you use this little connector, and then you can hold the shield, just put it in, and then you can kind of fold it up so it fits over his uh, arm guard there. That's a case of it just being very tight in the fist and not rotating down here. But, uh, but yeah. So you can have them all armed up, ready for battle. Now the bonus thing that I hadn't mentioned yet is, and I haven't popped these off the sprue yet, he does come with various fists. You can give him two solid fists. Neat idea, although then he can't hold any of his weapons. Um, but if you just want to have him posed with, because uh, you can store the sword on his back here. Maybe even store the shield down here if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, and uh, so he's got two closed fists. Two open palm hands and then one pointing finger, which uh, you can swap out, and those just that's what that's what gives you the wrist swivel. You just unpeg the hand and peg a new one in there. Quick size comparison. I'm just going to do it here with Star Screen. I'll bring in I'll bring in the Lambert Brothers too, since I have them here, um, just to give you an idea. He's one of the larger size figures. Um, not quite as big as Scorponok, uh, a little bigger than Overlord. But yeah, nicely, nicely sized. And the reason, like for, for Iron Factory figures, like I could bring in the whole collection and eventually I'm going to uh, do a whole shot uh, and of all of the Iron Factory figures I have together uh, because they're all pretty cool. But, uh, the Starscream mold, they've done several versions of it. They've done all the, the main seekers, they've done the cone heads, they've done Sunstorm, they did Acid Storm. Chances are you've either seen or own your own, some version of the seeker mold. And I think that's a great, 
uh, size comparison. I do think if you don't have the Scorpion, like the Lord Scorpion, they did. He's my uh, probably my favorite single individual figure from Iron Factory to date. I really like that Lord Scorpion. So uh, I will I will I will sing his praises any chance I get. Although War Giant as a whole is a set of five. Like all the individual guys are pretty cool, and then as a combiner is really neat as well. He's probably my second favorite overall, but best single figure so far from Iron Factory is I think Lord Scorpion. Now that will that's my opinion, but I really dig him. But uh, but like I said, the the Seekers are great too, and I feel like so, you've all seen or had at least one version of these guys. If you're collecting the scale line, and if you haven't, pick up one the, at least one of the Seekers because they're kind of neat. But there is Chrysalis, the Sword of the Guardian, from Iron Factory. Again, be careful with those those arm flaps, at least until the first few times, because maybe your hinges won't be as tight as mine. Part of it is those hinges are very tight on those panels, and if that's the case, you know, that yours aren't as scary tight, great. Do be careful with them the first couple of times. I'd hate to see somebody break a, a cool figure like this uh, just for not paying attention. 